Hello, I'm Alan Holtham. I'm going to show you how to make this very traditional carpenter's workbench. It's strong, it's rigid, it's everything you need for some serious woodworking. What's more, I'm going to make it with just a few basic hand and power tools. That doesn't mean it has to be crude. The joints are all proper mortise and tenons, wedged at the bottom and drawboard on the top rails. This is a proper job. You should be able to get it built and ready for action in just a couple of days. So let's get started. I used ready prepared planed all round material for the framework and a sheet of 25mm plywood for the top. The rails are 70 by 43, the legs are 70 by 70 and you'll also need some 50 by 20 for the lippings. Start by cutting out the legs. But do check the ends carefully as these may be split often to a considerable depth. So, make sure you work from a clean, split-free end. For accuracy, mark out the legs in pairs, squaring a line across at the required height. A mitre saw makes short work of the cutting, but do support the long pieces safely on a roller stand. A good quality saw like this ensures that all the cuts are square in both planes. For consistency, Cut all matching pieces together, starting with the longest. The extension to the bottom stretches add a great deal of rigidity to the frame, as there are no top rails. But I added a bit of curved detail on the ends to improve the appearance. Start this by drawing around a tin, and then cutting it out with a jigsaw. Set a couple of stops of orbital action and don't force the saw, and you should end up with a square cut with no run out. Clean up the cut using a bobbin sander either a separate machine or using a sanding drum in the drill press. This will give you a really neat square finish. The extension pieces are simply glued onto the ends of the stretchers. So do this first as they can be setting while you get on with the rest of the bench. Now mark the mortise position for the bottom rails and the legs, squaring across all four together for accuracy. The mortises are cut using the router and it is worth investing in a good quality bit that matches the width of the mortise so you don't have to waste time double cutting. From experience I've also found that using two fences on the router is much easier and more accurate for deep cuts like this and again it is worth that little extra initial investment. For very deep cuts you're best working from either side. So turn the leg over and repeat the cut. You can then either round over the tenons to fit the radius ends of the mortise or square up the mortises by hand using a chisel, which is what I actually prefer. Repeat the procedure for the top bridle joints but these are slightly short, so the top rail ends up a little proud of the top end of the leg. This ensures that if the top rail shrinks, the bench top is not then distorted by the leg ends. Repeat the marking and cutting sequence for the stretcher mortises, but of course these have to be longer to accommodate the extended width of the stretcher end. To cut the tenons, I use a simple jig, just like a heavy duty T-square. This is just two pieces of scrap screwed together at a perfect right angle, with a dowel as a stop in the end of the stock section. The router bit is adjusted for depth to leave the required tenor thickness. The after lock adjustment on the Bosch router makes this dead easy. With the jig firmly clamped in place, you can route away all the material to form the tenon, taking care that the router doesn't tip as the supporting waste is removed. Then finish off by running the base up tight against the jig to form a perfect shoulder. Now simply turn the work over and repeat the procedure. The dowel stop ensures the shoulders will match perfectly on either side. This router jig is by far the easiest way I've found for producing accurate tenons on big work pieces and is so quick and simple to set up. The resulting tenons should be a sliding fit in the mortises. Don't make the mistake of getting them too tight as the glue will swell the fibres slightly and you end up having to hammer the joints together. 
The tenons need to be reduced in width slightly to produce the haunches, but this is a simple job with a handsaw. To my mind, these haunches produce a much stronger joint and minimise any tendency for the finished frames to rack. I like to machine a tiny radius on all the exposed arises to reduce the possibility of damage to the corners once the bench is put into service. This is particularly important for the bottom of the legs as the bench will inevitably get dragged about and the legs will chip away if they're left square. The tenons will be wedged in the final assembly. So make a saw cut down the length near the outer edge and cut some fine wedges of exactly the same width as the tenon. Give all the components a thorough sanding to remove any pencil marks. This is so much easier to do at this stage rather than after the assembly. The top bridle joints are fixed with draw board dowels. So wedge a piece of scrap material into the mortise and drill right through with the appropriate dowel bit. I used an 8mm one. Number each joint for future reference. Assemble it and then use the same drill bit to mark the hole position on the tenon. Now move the hole position two or three millimeters in towards the tenon shoulder and mark them clearly with a bradle. Drill matching dowel holes on these new centers using a piece of scrap below to minimize any breakout. To assemble the end frames Cover each tenon thoroughly with glue and slide them into place. It's at this stage that you appreciate the tenons being a nice sliding fit. Then use sash cramps to pull the joints up tight, checking for squareness as you go. Tweak the alignment of the clamps slightly if necessary to get everything perfectly square. Whilst the cramp is in place, hammer in the pre-glued dowels. The action of forcing them through the slightly misaligned holes will pull the shoulders up really tight against the legs. Then do the same for the wedges, hammering them into the slots in the end of the tenon to spread them slightly so they end up like an immensely strong dovetail. Now set it all aside to dry thoroughly. I like to leave it overnight for PVA glue. Whilst the frames are setting, he can sand up any squeeze out on the butt joints of the stretcher extensions and then cut the tenons using the same jig and settings on the router. The plywood sheet to the top is first cut to length using a portable saw but do make sure it is well supported underneath to stop the saw blade binding. Then saw down the middle to produce two matching halves. These now need to be coated with glue and a proper glue roller with built-in reservoir really helps here. Then they're screwed together making sure the screws are all well countersunk in. To get the edges of the top perfectly square, trim them back using the same straight bit in the router, but this time running the base against a long straight edge. When the frames are thoroughly dry, the excess dowels can be cut off using a flush cutting saw and then thoroughly sanded to a neat finish. The wedges are cut off in exactly the same way and any protruding tenon flush back with a sharp block plane. The stretchers are glued and wedged into the end frames. The accuracy of the shoulders should ensure they pull up square, but do check this and adjust the cramps if necessary to get everything perfectly square. The base is fixed to the top with four large coach screws. These go through the top rails in oversized holes to allow for any movement. Remember that this potential shrinkage is also allowed for with the rails remaining slightly proud of the top end of the legs. You could leave the plywood edges exposed, but I think it's much neater if you apply some softwood lipping. 
just glue and nail this into place. The top edge of the lipping is radiused in the same way as the other components and then sanded perfectly flush to the top. I fitted a standard 7 inch quick release vise with a front dog as my main holding device. The back edge of all these vices is always slightly angled, so cut the recess with about 5 degrees of tilt set on your jigsaw. Fit a couple of hardwood jaw faces and then fix it in place using coach screws. For the tail vise I used another standard fitting. You need to add a couple of stabilizers and some jaw faces as well as a tommy bar but the result is a very useful tail vise. To get them vertical the dog holes are drilled using an electric drill in a drill stand with a head swung clear of the base. Set out two lines of holes along the length of the top and I also drilled three holes in the front jaw of the tail vise. Run the router with a tiny radius cutter round the lip of the holes. This makes it much easier to fit the dogs. The finished bench just requires a final sanding and then a coat of finish of some sort. I prefer one of the new generation of polywax finishes. These are very easy to apply and leave a wonderful satin feel to the timber. So there we are. It wasn't too difficult was it? Thanks to a little help from Bosch Professional Power Tools I've now got a proper workbench. Till next time, bye bye for now.